I can't take all the credit, but I think it is from a, the BX books. I'm just not sure where in the rural cyclopedia it is. Pretty big book, fellas. So uh, one third of your room should have creatures, and half of those should have treasure, and a sixth of those should have a trap, with half of those guarding a, a, another treasure. And one sixth of the room should have uh, special features like magical facts or weird machines or uh, kind of rest areas. And a third of the room should be empty, but a sixth of those should have hidden treasure. And if you're using any sort of non-PC attitude, uh, half those creatures should be hostile. And then the other half should be either neutral or indifferent. Which I think is pretty handy. So sorry for all the fractions, but I think it's necessary sometimes to get a little bit down and gritty when you're designing a dungeon. So you should take your time. You shouldn't just try to jump right into it and start your campaign. You should take your time building things up, uh, as it were. You don't have to rush into things until you're, you're full and ready. If you know what I mean, fellas. It's like I'm taking this time with this nice little tea section. Who knows what will uh, happen. Or what I'll put in here. As you can see, I've uh, used movie magic to kind of fast forward the time here, fellas. And you see, I filled it out a little bit. Uh, so I know what these various areas were. You know, there's six creatures, of course, and three of those are going to have treasure. And there's three traps, one that's guarding treasure, and three special features. And six empty rooms, but one of them has a hidden treasure. And really want enough treasure to be able to level up a party of four fighters plus 50%. So this dungeon level it's, itself, for example, has around 10,000 gold pieces as my, uh, my treasure budget, which I think is good to figure out. Because, uh, you know, this is, that's why they say in the various old modules, if you've ever read them, uh, the level limits, because they... They should kind of figure it out. Sometimes they don't, you know, especially in the early days. They're just trying to see what was the sweet spot. But this is a good sweet spot, I think, in my opinion. And uh, as you can see, like, uh, some of these rooms are empty. Some of them I've put little monsters or different tiles or piles of treasure, like gems, for instance, are worth uh, 300 gold pieces as a just as an average for this dun uh, dungeon. I will also determine that uh, out of the six creatures, instead of doing half, I've determined a, a third of them will be hostile, a third of them will be neutral, and a third of them will be friendly. So you see, I'm trying to figure out all these different icons to kind of make this, make these places look nice. Uh, this is actually two goblins, and they're going to be hostile, so I wanted to give them you know, some trash. Because, you know, if you don't pick up your trash, you know, these, that's how you get these old bastards start forming in and swarming your settlements. You know what I mean, fellas? No, it doesn't always have to be two. There might be a little bit more, up to six goblins, but you... You know, you should put each of these creatures on a encounter table. And I like having a day and a night encounter using a D6. I think it's pretty handy because you can have one one as a wizard and, and six as danger. One is potential danger and one is dangerous. Or each of them could be dangerous. So you could have a, a dragon on a one and a wizard on a six if you want. It's up to you. Uh, seven actually is pretty cool. It's a it's a pit to level two because you should have multiple entrances to the various different levels. 
number five actually has a crab spider, which is indifferent, but you know, there's 190 gold pieces in that room, which is pretty nice. Ten's also a pretty handy place. Uh, even though it's it's empty, it actually has this rug underneath of it uh, that has some hidden treasure. Like actually, most of the treasure in there. And thirteen is a healing fountain to kind of give your characters a respite. If you know what I mean, fellas. Seventeen's also empty, and so is sixteen and fourteen. And fifteen actually has some friendly adventures. I just thought I'd throw that in there with a, a merchant actually, you know, that has another way out. And so there's actually a, a chimney too on number 18, which is kind of a forge area. So there's some equipment there. Uh, so you can actually go down to the next level. And got to be aware of this trap. So I put a trap here and, and kind of like uh, foreshadow it a little bit too with some blood spots and kind of a weapon that you might be able to use in a and a different encounter and remember if uh, if your monsters actually have a surprise you should totally use traps like this and set try to think about areas like this when you're setting up different surprise encounters and battles to you know if the players can use the area I think a smart monster will also utilize the area to to get the edge on the players you know what I mean fellows you don't want to really give it to them because then when when they actually earn that victory, they feel really good because they fought for it. Alright fellas, that's the rest of the video. I hope you liked it. If you have any questions, please feel free to comment down below. I'll probably try to answer as any anything I missed, alright? Uh, if you want to see more of this content, please feel free to subscribe. If you would like to support anything I do here at Altered Games, please uh, give me a coffee. Uh, down below there's a link. Uh, I hope you guys have a good game next time you play. And please keep your shield arm strong, alright? No slacking now.